you know, I don't know what to make of all of this because it's happening so quickly. I can't believe the state to which the country has degenerated. He permanently destroyed 20% of the population's faith in the entire Canadian banking system and stained the Canadian banking system's international reputation, I would say, for decades. In this profound and candid video, Dr. Jordan Peterson delves into the societal and personal consequences of remaining silent in the face of untruths. Reflecting on his own experiences and the broader implications of societal compliance, Peterson criticizes the compliance that feeds totalitarian regimes, drawing on his extensive study of authoritarian governments. You know when you quell what you have to say, right? And you experience an inner disquiet, you think, I have something to say, but I'm afraid to say it. It's like, fair enough. How afraid are you not to say it? People have complimented me on my bravery, which is something I'm not particularly comfortable with, because I don't think it's the right way of thinking about it. It's not how I think about it. I think, no, I'm just afraid of the right thing. It's not that I'm brave. I'm way more afraid of not saying what I have to say than I am of saying it. And the consequences of saying what I have had to say have been dramatic and sometimes very painful as all, and also extremely rewarding, both of those at the same time. But I know perfectly well what the consequence of not saying what you have to say is because I studied totalitarianism for 40 years. and. In a totalitarian state, no one ever says what they have to say. You know, we have this theory about totalitarianism. It's sort of the theory we have about Putin right now. It's like, there's a lot of innocent Russians, and there's Putin. He's the tyrant, and all these innocent Russians are the victims of the tyrant, and that's a totalitarian state. And there's some truth in that, because power structures get extraordinarily warped and punitive in totalitarian states. But it's completely preposterous model of totalitarianism. The reason that totalitarianism is total is because everyone in a totalitarian state lies about absolutely everything all the time to everyone, to themselves, to their wife and, or husband, to their children, to the other members of their family, to their friends, to their colleagues totalitarian state is a state that's in the grip of the lie. And so what that means for each of us is that every time you lie, every time you lie, you're, this is the truth of the matter, every time you lie, you've just allowed yourself to become possessed by the same tyrannical spirit that's at the core of the totalitarian state. And you might think, no, I'm lying. It's like, no. The spirit of the lie is making itself manifest within you, and you are participating in your own possession. That's what's happening. And so I'm way more afraid of that. You know, when, when I got mobbed first, when I objected to Canada's compelled speech legislation, my job as a university professor was seriously threatened. I got two letters from the human resources people, and I know how human resources people work. They send you a letter and tell you to stop, and that's letter number one, and then they send you another letter and tell you to stop, and that's letter number two, and then they send you letter number three. Then they've documented your misbehavior sufficiently and given you fair warning, and then they fire you. It's just a procedure. I knew I'd seen this happen many times. I knew exactly what was going on, and they got to two letters with me. And at the same time, for similar reasons, not precisely the same, but similar, my clinical practice was threatened, so I had, I had three jobs. I was a university professor, I had a clinical practice, and I had a personal business. And so I wasn't that easy to take out, because you had to take me out three ways to be successful, because I could have used any of those to keep myself going. But two of them got blown out of the water. Now the third was, third actually bloomed, boomed as a consequence, so that was kind of nice. It's not like telling the truth is easy. It's difficult. You want to stand up to the woke mob? It's get your act together. 
Because it's not easy, right? Because you're seeing the incursion of a, of a serpentine and multidimensional bureaucratic tyranny that works behind the scenes and uses reputation savaging and gossip and innuendo to destroy reputation. It's a, it's a hell of a threat. And you're going to have to put yourself together well enough to, to be able to withstand that. But if you do, it'll be good for you because it'll force you to put yourself together. It'll force you to become the sort of person who can say no. And you can say no to someone if you have options. And no has to mean, I know what no means. People never like to talk about what no means. No means if you keep doing that, something you do not like will happen to you with 100% certainty. That's what no means. And you, and you have to be, that's what no means when you say it to children. And there's a brutal element to that. People don't even like to think that. It's like, well, what the hell do you think no means? If you mean it. No means I can take more torture from you than you're willing to dish out. I think part of the reason that I'm disinclined to shy away from conflict when it's necessary, even though I hate conflict, is because I'm way more afraid of not solving the problem right now than I am of the pain that would be necessary to make the situation clear. And that's because I look ahead and I think, what's it going to be like if we don't solve this problem? It's going to be just like it is now, except the problem's going to be worse and I'm going to be weaker. And I'm already disinclined to solve it. So how disinclined am I going to be to solve it when it's worse and I'm weaker? This video serves as both a personal recount and a philosophical discourse on the power of truth in maintaining personal and societal freedom. Dr. Peterson challenges his audience to consider what they fear more, the repercussions of speaking out or the consequences of silence. I have a calm, rational question. Okay. I won't get emotional with you.